What's up guys, it's Dan, it's gone, and today we'll be talking about baseball's newest trend in torpedo bats. To say that torpedo bats have taken the baseball world by storm may be an understatement. In less than half a week, the most dominating storyline of the 2025 season has been these bats. The Yankees, with a good chunk of their lineup using these bats, had a historic weekend, tying the baseball record for most home runs in a team's first three games with 15 home runs, with nine of them coming from a torpedo bat, and this sent the world into a frenzy. Teams all around baseball are ordering these bats, and even though they've been around for some time now, they are all the rage. Even in the making of this video, Ellie De La Cruz in his first game using a torpedo bat hit two home runs and had seven RBIs. And from T Trevor McGill calling them a slow pitch softball bat, to Manny Machado telling whoever is making these bats to send some over to San Diego, everyone seems to have an opinion on these bats. However, do they even work? And if so, how do they work? Are they legal? And what does the future of baseball entail with this piece of revolutionary technology? This video will look to solve all of these questions, but first, before we get onto the video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button. Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would help me grow my channel, but also would encourage me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. So to answer the first question, yes, torpedo bats do provide a competitive advantage, at least to some hitters. And to explain the theory behind torpedo bats, we first have to talk about bat speed. Bat speed, officially measured starting in 2023 by StatCast, basically means what the title says. It's how fast the player swings the bat. However, simply due to how new the technology for officially measuring it in-game is, we don't entirely know the full extent to which bat speed does for hitters. However, we do know that bat speed is very important though. Among the top 10 bat speeds in all of baseball for 2024, the first season in which it was implemented full time, we see some of the most prolific power hitters in the game, including dudes like John Carlos Stanton, O'Neill Cruz, Kyle Schwarber, Aaron Judge, Jordan Alvarez, Shohei Otani, Gunnar Henderson, and Julio Rodriguez. So clearly, there is some correlation between bat speed and simply hitting the ball hard and well. To back this up, according to both StatCast and Driveline, there's a strong correlation between bat speed and home run to fly ball rate, hard hit rate, and barrel percentage. And even one physicist went on to say, for a barreled up ball at an optimal launch angle, an increase of bat speed of just one mile an hour would result in an extra six feet of extra distance on these fly balls, turning potential flyouts into doubles and home runs. So, while we don't yet know all of the data behind bat speed simply because it's so new, we do know it's important and a fast bat speed is very valuable. However, the issue is that bat speed is in large part an unchangeable trait, like speed. The only real way to change bat speed is to get stronger or have a better load. A batter cannot simply get lucky and result in a 5 mile an hour increase to their bat speed season over season, and this is where torpedo bats come in, along with a little bit of physics. So, the basic idea with torpedo bats is to make the center of mass closer to the hands, making it easier to swing faster. To showcase this mathematically, we can start with one of the most famous physics equations in all of history, and force equals mass times acceleration. However, since the bat speed involves moving the bat in a rotational motion, rather than just in a straight line, we can use F equals MA's rotational counterpart and torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Isolating for the bat's velocity, rather than the acceleration, we can move some stuff around to get torque times time, or angular impulse, equals moment of inertia times angular velocity, or bat speed. The basic idea with this equation is that, in theory, the angular impulse here remains the same. A player, no matter which bat he uses, ideally will apply the same amount of strength in every swing, so this part on the left is unchangeable. Therefore, the only way to increase the bat speed on the right side of the equation is to decrease the moment of inertia that it is being multiplied by, as the two combined have to equal the same number, so when moment of inertia decreases, bat speed has to increase. So to highlight what a torpedo bat does to lower this moment of inertia, let's look at two extreme examples in a perfectly uniform wood rod and a piece of wood all the way at the length's edge. These two pieces of wood weigh the same, as per bat regulations negotiated by the MLB, but their average point of masses are at different spots, providing a reason as to why their moment of inertias are different and why one would be easier to swing than the other. The fraction in front of ML squared designates how easy it is comparatively it would be to swing. So even while mass and length are the same, the distance between the center mass and his hands are designated by this fraction. And since we're trying to maximize bat speed, we want this fraction to be as low as possible. 
For a normal baseball bat, since the handle is skinnier than the barrel, we would expect the average center mass to be around right here. However, what a torpedo bat does is that it takes some of the wood at the very end of the bat, where hitters completely ignore for hitting, and moves it closer to where the hands are, decreasing the overall center mass to be closer to the hands, and also decreasing the moment of inertia and inc increasing angular velocity and bat speed. And what's cool is that we can immediately see this effect by looking at bat speeds year over year for some of the most prolific torpedo bat users. Anthony Volpe has seen his bat speed increase from the 14th percentile in 2024 all the way up to the 48th percentile so far in 2025. Cody Bellinger 13th to 32, and Jazz Chisholm went from the 54th percentile to the 66th percentile. And since we know that some of the best hitters in the game utilize very high bat speeds, having a bat that you can swing faster while still having integrity at the part of the bat where you can hit the ball the most can make some decent hitters into very good hitters and some very good hitters into great hitters. Additionally, it looks like these bats are here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future for this season. At the moment with the current bat regulations, the MLB Torpedo Bat fits perfectly within these regulations. Additionally, the bat regulations were also negotiated by the MLB Players Association, so any change to these regulations during the season would have to go through and get approved by both the MLB and the MLB Players Association, making it much more difficult to come to a unanimous agreement if they do want to change the rules. So, assuming that they don't end up changing the rules this season, what would a full season of baseball torpedo bats look like? Would it solve our offensive drought that we've had over the past couple of seasons? Well, yes and no. While torpedo bats help out some players and the overall offensive environment will likely rise thanks to this new technology, at the end of the day, they're just tools to enhance a player's already strong skill set. If a player has strikeout or consistency of contact issues, a torpedo bat will not do anything to impact such rates. Additionally, a torpedo bat may even enhance baseball's epidemic of three true outcomes. Looking at bat speed, some of the lowest bat speeds come from some of the most prolific contact hitters in the game, like Luis Arias and Steven Kwan. These players keep their bat in the zone for a very long time, generating a ton of contact. However, since contact rate and bat speed are inversely correlated, strikeouts and back speed are also correlated as well. If more players switch to the torpedo bat searching for power, we could see averages dip while slugging percentages rise. We could see even more strikeouts and more home runs, and the overall baseball environment could have less runners on base. So overall, torpedo bats are a fascinating piece of technology, and 2025 is a hallmark season for them on the global stage, and watching how the league environment as a whole changes will be extremely intriguing for 2025 and potentially beyond if MLB agrees to use torpedo bats on a more widespread stage. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. If you like these types of analytical videos where I talk more about the physics and science, also let me know in the comments down below, and I can make more videos, maybe one on the Magnus Effect or other videos like that. And without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one. God bless.